Hey everyone, this is Tony from Bikeberry, and today what I want to talk about is planning out your project. How to be mechanically minded so that you can foresee everything that you're, you're ordering or you're wanting to uh, get for your build, whether that part is actually going to work or not. Because there are some things where, let's take mufflers for example, you'll get a basic muffler and that's good to break your engine in. Okay. Uh, beyond that, you may look at more performance oriented options. Okay. But what I want to show you, we're going to go deep here is I want to show you how to be mechanically minded about every single part that you're going to order. Cause these are customized things. Even a basic build is still a pretty customized things. I mean, we're talking about fun engines on bicycles here. <laughs> um, there are some basic places that you need to start, uh, but it's possible to be able to see mechanically through the whole process from A to Z. It's kind of like when you go on vacation and you're thinking, we're going to go to the beach. I have this, you know, I'm going to go to this business meeting or I'm going to go to the show or whatever. And you're going to pack the appropriate clothes for those different occasions, events, things like that. You're not going to forget your swimming trunks for the beach, right? <laughs> like that's an important part, okay? Well, you have those thoughts in your mind about how to pack for a trip. The same is with ordering bicycle parts, right? And these engines and all this stuff. You need the proper gear for the destination that you're trying to get to, okay? So I'm going to teach you how to mechanically think about the interaction of all these parts so that you can order everything pretty much in the beginning and not even have to, you know, order anything too late or wait on it. Now, obviously we can't guarantee hundred percent of that, but for the most part, you're going to be successful. So I'm super excited to dive into this. Let's roll. So I thought the best place to start is on my original motorized bicycle build. Now, this was my first project, the first time I ever did anything like this. The whole goal was I didn't know much about small engines and how they worked. Yeah, I could kind of fix the lawnmower and things like that, but I didn't really know. And I thought, well, a single cylinder two stroke is the perfect place to start. I have twin boys, and so I wanted to show them and learn along with them on how to build you know, a small engine, motorized bike, you know, so fun. But because of my prior experience in fabrication, I knew how to plan something like this out, even though I'd never done it before. I knew that, you know, we have a good working bicycle and I knew there'd be drivetrain, you know, added chains, there'd be exhaust, there's gonna be some electronics, there's gonna be a lot more cables, all of that. And so I really planned it as a big picture thing that way I could order all the right parts and not have to wait for things. So the way I like to think about this is, let's say you're building a deck on the back of your house. Now you don't wanna be going to the hardware store, the lumber yard and getting another board and another board and another board and a box of screws and then you know run out <laughs> in one day and have to go again. No, you wanna plan so you have everything that you need and all you have to do is maybe get a few things once the project is well underway. You know, there's going to be some things that you're just not going to foresee. But for the most part, you can just by planning and troubleshooting along the way before you place your order. So that's what I did. So let's get into it. So that switch screws up there, we're going to turn it into a bike just like this one. So stay tuned for future episodes. It's going to be super cool. Now, there's two things that a motorized bike needs. It needs to go and it needs to stop. So that's what I focused on first is, how do I get this thing to stop? I know the coaster brake is not going to be able to withstand all the power that this engine can give the bike. So I thought, well, I can add a disc brake in the front and I can do a caliper brake in the back. So if you look here, I mounted a caliper brake. And if you look here, I mounted a disc brake. And I mounted it directly to this lever that pulls both at once. It has worked flawlessly. I hardly ever use the coaster brake. Next up is the chain drive. Okay, so you come down from the engine. Boom, right? All the way down to the sprocket. Okay, I knew the rag joint wasn't what I would rely on. So I got a sprocket and an adapter. And it has worked flawlessly 
ever since I mounted it on there. Now, the reason this has worked so flawlessly is that I keyed the inside of the adapter onto the hub. Now, on a cruiser bike, the hubs are bigger and the wall is thicker, so you have room to grind down in there and make sure that it stays. But ever since I did that, it has stayed and not moved one bit. I check it all the time. Um, another thing is, is getting a tensioner. Now, this is before I knew about these. I welded one in there, but you can buy these and you can bolt that thing on. I like this much better than the one that comes with the engine because I know that it's not gonna fall into the spokes or come loose. The other one that comes with the engine kit, while it's a four bolt pattern and a lot of people have good luck with them, uh, I went one step you know, ahead and said, I want a curve tensioner and that way I know that I'm good to go. So that was another thing I planned. I just thought that through. Do I want to have trouble? No, I want to have the least amount of trouble. So I'm going to, um, you know, put things on here that'll give me the least amount of, um, you know, problems and things I got to worry about. For my build, I knew that I wanted it pretty much as the NG kit came with a few upgrades on the things that I saw would need some improvement. So I used the stock engine mounts and all I did was add these really thick walled spacers in here to get the engine to sit exactly where I wanted it to sit. And it hasn't budged since I did that. But this is all of the stuff that came with the engine kit, except for the spacers. Now, as far as the muffler goes, I saw the video that we have up here on the site and it talked about all the various mufflers that we sell. I saw the flexible muffler as the one that uh, just had good basic performance. You know, it did really well. Uh, so I ordered it and it's exactly what I wanted. I didn't want a high performance loud. I wanted it pretty quiet. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of top end, but overall it performs really well. Now down the road, I will put a high performance one on there. My engine is really broken in at this point, And so I'm ready to make those upgrades. But for right now, I just wanted my bike to perform very, very basic, very standard, just good quality running. And this muffler produced that. But you can see that, you know, I made my own mounts in here to make it work. And it hasn't budged since. So you gotta get creative with these, okay? And I extended this out. So yeah, this took some welding, uh, you know, skills, but I took the original muffler and cut, you know, cut this pipe off, welded the flange on and bolted it up. It works perfect, works flawless. Uh, I'm kind of impressed. <laughs> Probably one of the most important things was I got the bipod kickstand because I thought, well, if a bicycle is always falling over with the one-sided kickstand, then I thought I might as well upgrade that too. So that you can actually sit on it and then rock it forward and, and take off and it works really well. But that was a really important thing is to make sure that the bike was stable and I could work on it. It wasn't going to fall over in the yard or anything like that. So this one has been really good. But if my goal here is to show you like each part is really well thought out and I haven't had any trouble from it. Uh, I know a lot of people, this is just throwing this in there. I know a lot of people talk about loctiting everything. As of now, I haven't loctited a single thing and I don't have any trouble. I've ridden this for lots and lots and lots of miles. Uh, I check it all the time and everything, but I haven't done one drop of, you know, of loctite at all. Now, uh, on to the next thing is, and thing that I knew would be troublesome is the throttle. Because the plastic one, a lot of people said they have trouble with that. I didn't want to have trouble with it, so I ordered the aluminum one, and it has performed flawlessly. Like, I'm blown away by how good that works. Another thing that I paid particular attention to is all the zip ties that hold all the cables on. So if you look, you know, here, the engine, everything has stayed really well where I, where I put it at. Nothing really moves. I even did one on the top here. Everything stays really well. So getting everything so it isn't loose is super important. All right, you're probably wondering why do I have the tank on the back? Well, in this particular case, I wanted that board track style uh, and I just didn't want that big tank hump on the front. I wanted the behind the seat one. So that one I had to order and I had to wait for it because of all the shipping delays that you know, we're experiencing in the world. You know, So I got it. 
uh, that's going to replace here, but I just put it on there so that I can get it going and I'm fine with it. You know, I actually gave me some ideas to maybe do some, a cool cover over it and maybe leave it. So I don't know, but that was a, Hey, let's get it on there and then I can get everything going. I can add that later. So that didn't stop me from, you know, getting my build going. All right. So now that we've done a run through of my first build where, as I look back on it, I made a lot of really good choices because I educated myself before I ordered everything. Pretty much everything on the bike hasn't changed much. I've done a few like adjustments, tightening things up, a few tweaks, made a little more clearance for the chain, you know, pathway, things like that. But I didn't have to like re-engineer anything. Okay, so some of my mindset around how can I do this better? Like the kit comes with a, a lot of really great parts and everything. And, you know, but like take the rag joint for instance, a lot of people have a lot of really good success with the rag joint. I just didn't want to be a person who was having to deal with adjusting it all the time. Right. And then I thought, well, it could really wear in your spokes. And I just saw all the problems down the road with it. So I was like, well, what is a sprocket adapter? How does that work? Now that doesn't mean you get something else and it's totally trouble free. I knew that it's smooth in here, it could slip. So then I learned the keyway method. And so that's something that we'll get into in future uh, videos as we'll end up showing you guys how to do all that stuff. You know, learning the keyway method, what is the right way to make sure this grip, start thinking like a machinist in that case, right? Uh, the sprocket that comes with this is a machined sprocket it's much better so you know think of it through like that like oh i could have you know the issues with this am i am i willing to deal with that well no not really i want something as long as i mount it on there correctly i don't won't have any troubles with it and i really haven't same for the chain tensioner now this is fine a lot of people have used it they keep it tight it's good it, it does the thing for them I'm one of those people that aesthetically, I want things to look, you know, a little different. Okay. I want things to look a little more custom. So that's where, you know, you can do this, the curve chain tensioner. I'm, it's a guarantee. This is not going to fall into your rim and everything. So I was like one less problem that I'd have to deal with and thing that I would have to be worried about. And so that's why, you know, I mounted that on mine. So you have all these brackets and everything. Uh, it works really great. Like I haven't had any trouble with it and it just flawlessly. Now as for stopping power for the, again, this is all prep for the Swiss cruise bike build ordered rims that I could mount the front disc brake to. So I got those ready, being able to ready to mount, you know, on the front fork or front caliper. Um, and then our rear caliper brake, cause we're going to have three brakes on this system on this bike. Well, I take that back because this rim is a free will, free will rim. So those would be our two brakes. I already ordered the two pull uh, lever for it. And I ordered the aluminum uh, throttle housing. So that way I don't have to worry about the plastic one. This one's really proven itself well to me. Um, yeah, so, you know, this is a stage four kit for everything. So it came with a high compression head. Uh, I don't have the exhaust here and everything, but that's, that's okay. We'll talk about that another time, but, um, I hope I conveyed to you thinking through your process, you know, the process of building your bike from the back to front, what exhaust is going to fit, how you're going to have to modify it. Cause not everything's going to fit every single bike perfectly. Every time, uh, your chain pathway, is it going to be nice and straight? What do you need for that? Are you willing to put up with the rag joint or do you need the, the adapter, you know, um, my advice is to upgrade those things from the very beginning. That way your bike starts out on a really solid footing. And then when you go to add on, just like I still have to do more high performance parts at a base level, the bike runs for great. There's no problem. Then you can troubleshoot better. Like a little insight knowledge on this is then you can troubleshoot better when you put high performance on because you know at a base level how it like right now i could get on that bike and ride it and it will ride great well i can if i change out my carburetor for the high performance carburetor i know how it works functions and everything as a whole i'll know how that carburetor affected it 
I didn't go and put on a new exhaust and a new carburetor and a new, <laughs> you know, all these parts. And then it's, I got too many things, too many variables to troubleshoot. So I hope that helps you look at the parts that you want to order, what kit, engine kit you want to get, uh, you know, how you're going to, how you're going to go and how you're going to stop. That's the whole key to all of this. And what do you want to deal with moving down the road? Right? So moving along. Um, I like having things good from the start. So I hope this helps you out. Subscribe, comment below, ask any questions in there. I want good ideas. If I didn't go over anything clear enough in this video, please tell me and say, Hey, could you go over this more insight on that? This has been, and share your experience. Anybody who has experience in this, please share it below and we'll put that into our content for future, uh, you know, f future videos. So this is super cool. I'm super excited. We're going to start assembling the Switz Cruise that's above me. You can kind of see it here. <laughs> uh, the Switz Cruise, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.